How are you doing, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Ingus and I'm from IGS Electronics, and today we are going to be saying goodbye to Schneider for now. Doesn't mean we're stopping it at all. There's a ton of ton of Schneider products we're going to be still reviewing and working with in the future videos. But today we are going to be starting a new series, and those series are going to be S7 Siemens S7 1500 series PLC. So uh, I have uh, put out a questionnaire on YouTube, and you guys clearly pointed out that you want to see S7 1500. That's exactly what we're going to be doing today. So to start up to start, start up the series, what we're going to do, we're going to be doing a uh, full rack assembly. We're going to be using a CPU, adding a whole load of cards, and checking out how that all that's done, and do some basic uh, CPU power up. And another thing we're going to do, as you probably know already, the CPUs now S1500 series PLC come with the LCD HMI screens, where it gives you a hell of a lot of uh, access to quite a bit of uh, information, diagnostics, and all other bits and pieces within that HMI screen and we're going to do a, a, a basic walkthrough within this first video and with the second part of this video which is going to be later on it, we're going to be doing a, uh, a configuration in a TI portal and uh, and uh, getting this rack pretty much uh, going and be aware guys you do need advanced version to work with 1500 series PLCs Somatics uh, TI portal uh, uh, advanced version. I am still on uh, 16, so I will be uh, I will be changing to 17 very very soon, but not yet. And so do make sure advanced version is required for you to be able to work with 1500 series PLCs. So any rate manuals, everything I believe will benefit you in a possible way is going to be description below. So yeah, without further ado, let's get started. <music> So first up is going to be our uh, CPU and the CPU today we are going to be using for most of these series it's going to be a uh, 513 so it's a CPU uh, 1513 that's the CPU we're going to be using so uh, it's one of the latest modules I know they had a bit earlier modules that uh, looked a little bit different this is one of the latest ones and uh, yes that's exactly what we're going to be using so um, First one we put on that on our rack. The rack, by the way, the back plate is definitely different. There used to be on a uh, uh, sorry in on a 30, uh, 300 series. So the one and uh, the one thing I wanted to point out at the beginning, you, as you can see, it's got like a, a, a bus plates on the back. So uh, these are like a bus connectors. So these are these are the ones you definitely, as you can see, they're much much different than they used to be on 300 series. So uh, you're gonna need uh, those. Make sure you are able to connect these together. So first up, CPU. So we're going to put that in here. So the next one I'm going to be using is this card in here. This is a Profi bus, so a communications module, just in case we want to use uh, uh, to some of the older, uh, older units, older Siemens products that uh, 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 require the the bus, uh, the Profi uh, Profi Profi bus to uh, communicate with it. So. That's exactly why we're going to add this card onto it. So uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure we're going to be using Profibus in the future because I want to check out some ASIs and all other things like that. Next up, we are going to be put in a... Uh, let me just unplug it. So it's going to be our... Uh, a digital input card. This this is a thin. This is a thick one. This is the this is this is uh, comes with the 32 channels. There's a 16 version is 16 uh, 16 point version as well, which we can show that in a minute. As we're gonna add the stuff into it, and when it comes down to these ports in here, we're gonna get to them once we're gonna start checking them out, how they're wired and everything in between. So again, just need to make sure we add our uh, bus for continuation. So uh, no, so here we go. So and. Let's plug that onto it. So that's our next card. So obviously we can, I'm going to secure that uh, screw down in a minute. And um, from there on, I will add two more cards. One is going to be digital output, and then the uh, digital output one is going to be, and then it's going to be, we are going to have also analog input. Very very cool analog input card. It pretty much supports every signal out there that you're going to be working with. Well, when I say every signal, I mean um, most signals that you you would be knowing about to use and and work with. So that's, this card is going to allow us to do that. Also, our digital output. So that's all plugged in. And from there on, another card that I want to add, which I'm trying to look around where it is, it's going to be still in a box. We are going to do the uh, analog output as well. Why not? So uh, uh, we are going to use some, are we going to use that? Possibly, but for now, 
we're just gonna take that as you can see it's thinner so this is one of the thinner version it doesn't matter if it's the if it's a 32 or 16 it's fine you can still mix and match them so here we go so let's put that one uh, on there and that will do for now for uh, this add-on so for for this assembly oh I forgot to put that forgot to put the the bus on that one so let's join these two together and for now obviously we're going to be adding more as we as we progress in uh, the future so but for now that will do this is our first uh, initial assembly I think I'm going to put that one in as well because that just looks weird if you don't so uh, and we are going to be talking through all the what the hell is this? Oh, this is going to all the points and the wiring and everything in between for all of them even as you can see this one doesn't have this point in there doesn't have internet there. we're going to check all that out in the future videos so uh, so yeah as you can see all these are set and uh, ready to go so next up so uh, we need to uh, configure it uh, and obviously first no, actually first we need to wire it so the CPU itself is going to have 24 volt DC supply going to it it's got two ports in here so it's a P1 and P2 as you can see down there and a 24 volt DC supply so uh, this the CPU is uh, I can't remember how many uh, watts it can support it will support these cards until one point it runs out of power and you will know when you run out of power because the PLC will try to start up and then it's going to go down which I'm probably going to dem demonstrate in the future future videos and you're going to keep restarting because it's got not enough power when that happens you will need a uh, bus power supply this is only for the bus so as you can see in here you are uh, powering your bus with this power supply once you start running out with this guy alone so you are the because because I can't remember how many cards you can add in one length but quite a bit and you will definitely gonna need extending your power supply for your bus so that's for the future in videos so for now so that will do so let's jump on to the, uh, the no, actually actually let me just wire this all up and we'll I'll see you on the laptop here we go so the PLC now is wired in and ready to power on but before we go before we start we do need to make sure we add memory card remember a memory card is crucial is required item for these uh, CPUs so do make sure you do that and get it and make sure that is the SMC card so it's basic SMC is for the CPUs and I've got another one in here which is actually HMI that's just, just a standard SD card in here. This is not standard SD card. Whatever, whatever you do, guys, do not format on a Windows because there is, there is, there is like a, like a file on there that runs this card. So if you do format it, that file is gone and the card is gone pretty much. It becomes just a standard SD card. So you, that's something you don't want to do. So here we go. So let's power it up. What it's going to do at the very beginning, so he's going to be going through his usual thing. Uh, checking what's on a bus and uh, connecting all things up and figure out and we're pretty much working out what is what so that's what it's going to do at the very beginning as you can see from the screen which we're going to zoom in at the moment I've got no configurations being done which can be checking out in the next video so let's do that and one thing we're going to need to do we need to open, open up so first screen so hopefully everything is visible first screen is an eye screen I was an overview screen well, by clicking OK, you can have a look at the CPU, what's the IP address and then everything else. And then you can click with a bit more extra where you can have a look at the PLC itself. And it's going to tell you exactly where, where, where the triangles pretty much tell you where the problem is. And it says no project loaded, no project loaded. So uh, so that's pretty much for that. And then you can have a, prog a program protection on memory card. You can check out the revision, things like that in overview. So after that we have the diagnostic this is this is where you're going to spend most of the time when you're going to be trying to diagnose or trying to work with your cpu's issues so alarms if there's any alarms you is, is, is going to dis uh, display them in here so at the moment we have no alarms so diagnostic buffer where it records all the all the states that has been happening so as you can see it's all in there if you want to know a bit more information about it just click down and click ok and it's going to open tell you what's happened in the previous previous uh, previous uh, whatever information that you needed to record as you can see your CPU info flow non operation mode change power on mode set no startup so here we go so that's pretty much the last state it recorded it so uh, I haven't done that so uh, in diagnostics buffer let's leave and then there's a watch table which is not created because that comes with it later on and there's your cycle time where you can check out your CPU cycle time so uh, to make sure your CPU is healthy and not getting overloaded 
Uh, and after that, you still have a used memory where you can check out how much memory has been used. So uh, let's leave that. So next up is a little setup uh, spanner where you can set up a lot of things. First things, if I look at it, is the addresses. And as you can see, the only address now at the moment is there is the X1, which is CPU's address. And uh, by clicking on it, you will see the MAC address, the device name, and IP address. Uh, the IP address is actually, to make my life easier, you can change it from the, P, uh, from, the P, uh, from the laptop, but we're going to change it in here just in case you want to see it. So by clicking it, OK, it's going to open that. And what we're going to do, we're going to change the subnet to 0. So, uh, so that's, I'm going to keep the subnet to 0 and click up. Uh, wait a second, we'll do that. And then we need to go on to apply and then click OK. So this is where he's going to assign it. Here we go. So that's how you know assigned. And that's that, so the IP address is good. And obviously you can find out everything else you want to find out in there. So, so your subnet mask and the uh, router address and so on and so on. So uh, I've done that. Uh, an address system from there on, you have a daytime run stop and you can reset CPU. And uh, protection, backups, lock, unlock displays and firmware updates and things like and card handling. So we're going to be checking some of this out in the future, so uh, don't worry. So uh, that's pretty much where the settings are. And the uh, next one we have is modules. This is where you can find out if there's any issues with your modules. It will pretty much tell you in here. By clicking OK, we'll open the whole list of the modules now. That's including as well the CPU, native plugged in, plugged in at the moment. They are all not named. And as you can see, there should be six of them. And that's all there is. Six cards. And by clicking on it, let's say slot two, you can click on it. Status which if there would be any problems, it would show you them. But at the moment, there's no problems. There's the module state is good, good. So slot two, manufacturer is a Siemens. I don't know what other manufacturer you can put on it, but hey. So uh, order number, serial number, and blah, blah, blah. So pretty much you can find out all the necessary information about your cards. So and after that, so uh, it is just your uh, display where you can more or less uh, to do your brightness language change and uh, project language. What else we got in here? I'm be much in here. Energy savers. How much, uh, I wonder how much energy does he use? Diagnostic refresh, says, uh, diagnostic refresh, order numbers, uh, and, uh, and so on, so on. So basically about the display. So, and of firmware. So on that, ladies and gentlemen, we'll do for this video because that is because the video is already dragging on. So what we're going to do, we're going to come back to it in the next video where we're going to configure this bad boy uh, to get ready for our next upcoming uh, challenges. So yeah, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. So, uh, and I will see you in the next video.